Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros, it's Drew here, and today, for day 9 of Listmas 2022, we're going to be sitting down with Coast Tunes as we count down our top 10 bucket list coasters in the entire world. Hey guys, it's Coast Tunes here to talk about my top 5 most anticipated coasters. There are a lot of other topics, but since I've literally been on like... 40 coasters, I chose the one you need the least credibility for. So let's get into the list before I talk your ear off. So a little while ago, I rode Steel Vengeance as my first RMC. Now this was a tragic mistake, as it's also probably the best RMC. You, you can't really ride this monster and then go ride like freaking Twisted Cyclone and still be excited, but there are a handful of RMCs that still excite me and Lightning Rod is one of them. This is for obvious reasons, the launch, the terrain, two different tracks, the quad down, there's just a lot going for this ride that still makes me want to ride it. I've heard it's not as good after the retrack, but I'm sure it's still a great ride and definitely worth the trip out for Dollywood alone. Yeah, Lightning Rod is something that I gotta get out and ride ASAP as well. But first, we're gonna head to Massachusetts for number 9 for Six Flags New England's own Superman The Ride. Now, you might be wondering, why in the heck is this on my list? Well, I am a Millennium Force lover. Those Intamin Hyper and Giga Coasters with the T-Bar lap restraints have always been a favorite of mine. There's always so much floater airtime, some great positive Gs in the turns, and I gotta say, Superman especially boasts a pretty incredible layout and an amazing setting with the river within arm's reach, it looks like. Add in some great theming as well as some head choppers and hand choppers and even some tunnel sections, this is a must ride for me. Can't wait to get out to New England. These are the other RMCs that make the list. Now, this isn't all Raptors, this is just Wonder Woman and Railblazer. Not Stump Pilot, not Jersey Devil, the original RMC clones at Fiesta Texas and California's Great America. And there's really only one reason, it's the pacing. I got a taste of the Raptor experience with Jersey Devil at Great Adventure, but that's really just a drunk uncle of RMC Raptors. It's slower, it's duller, and it just doesn't do that much. But it did give me a different perspective on RMC. The original clones are the full extent of these Raptors. I don't know if this is like the final form of the model, but it's definitely close. Like I said before, the pacing on these things looks like cartoonish, and because of that, the airtime and inversions also look like unlike any other coasters. Definitely a bucket list for me. I gotta say, the Raptors are phenomenal all around. The only one I'm missing right now is Jersey Devil. But let's change gears to another type of RMC, a topper track model, specifically Wildfire at Kulmorden. All the way out in rural Sweden, and that's a huge reason why I gotta get on this coaster, as it has one of the most amazing settings on a coaster, if not in the entirety of the world. I find it funny that both of the major coasters named Wildfire have this fantastic cliffside setting with trees and lakes galore, but the Wildfire in specific that I'm talking about being an RMC with multiple crazy inversions, a ridiculously steep drop, and so much airtime, I can't wait to ride it, especially ever since I got to ride Outlaw Run for the first time. If it's anything like that, it's going to be a top three coaster for sure. X2 is a crazy looking ride. I mean, there's really not that much to this one. Like, look at it. It's got an insane first drop that's face town. It's got friggin' rotating seats throughout the whole ride. It's got fire. I mean, like, you know what X2 is. This isn't your first time hearing about this ride. And just look at it. You can tell it's a bucket list coaster just from pictures. This isn't one that needs a lot of justification because it's the only one on this list that I would genuinely still be terrified of, so it gets extra points for that. Heading to number five now, we're going to head to Belgium for Plopsaland's own Ride to Happiness. This mock extreme spinning coaster is just the definition of bonkers. This ride starts out with a twisted JoJo roll into a launch, all the while you're spinning freely. There looks to be some crazy airtime through the first drop, as well as a cool inversion in the banana roll. And don't get me started on the most hyped element of this ride for me, the double inversion towards the end. I hate to say it, but this is my number one reason for going to Belgium, and hopefully I can make it out there sooner rather than later. The only coaster that I think could rival X2 for the most intense ride in the planet is I-305. This is a giga coaster if you made it in Planet Coaster and couldn't afford the hills. It stays crazy low to the ground, comically low to the ground, and it thrashes you back and forth in your seat over and over again. The first turn is so intense that they had to modify it to make it more stomachable, and it just looks great with that massive airtime hill. That massive airtime hill looks incredible. Floater bliss. The theme is cool, the first drop looks great, the pacing is off the charts, and I genuinely think this ride could make me black out. There's just something really, 
attractive about that. Maybe attractive isn't the right word, but I just really want to ride it. Next up, we're heading to Japan to Fuji Q Highland for Ejinaika. Now, earlier on this list, X2 was brought up, and I can say, as someone who really adores that ride, Ejinaika is the next step to insanity. This direct sequel to X2 is taller, faster, longer, and more insane. Sure, it doesn't have fire, but it has an improved smoothness, at least from what I hear, as well as a more complete layout, and that entices me more than anything else. Now, while I might not be getting to Japan anytime soon, Ejinaika is always going to secure a spot on my bucket list, at least until I get there. Now, I know this coaster breaks backs, but still putting that aside, it looks really fun. The launch looks like the single best moment on any coaster, and nothing you can stay will change my mind about that. And yeah, after that, the ride isn't anything special, but it doesn't need to be. In fact, after the launch, the ride is basically over, except for a turn and a loop that are both meant to just kind of burn off speed. But 0 to 112 miles per hour in 1.6 seconds is something you just can't turn down, and you just can't really describe unless you've been on it. Not that I would know, because I haven't been on it. I don't think I'll ever make it out to Japan to ride this, but if I could, I wouldn't hesitate to break my back in everything. Since I was so lucky to ride the Voyage earlier this year, and that was previously my number one bucket list coaster, I have a new number one, and that's Fury 325 at Carowinds. We've come back to the US for number one, more specifically, mainly North Carolina, as we're going to talk about the tallest, fastest, and longest B&M Giga Coaster in the world. On that same trip I rode the Voyage, I got to ride Orion quite a few times, and I had such a fantastic time on it. It seriously made its way into becoming one of my favorite coasters, and it only made me more excited for getting to check out Fury 325 one of these days. A 320 foot drop over 90 miles an hour in speed, as well as even a tunnel section, and that's without talking about some of the fantastic airtime and positive Gs all around. I can't reiterate enough how much I want to be able to check this ride out. And with Air Force One opening early next year, it seems like a trip down there is a good idea. Especially to check out Lightning Rod, too. Well, there you have it, Coast Tunes and I's top 10 bucket list coasters. I want to say a huge thanks to Coast Tunes for joining me on this video. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, make sure to go check out his channel. He's almost at 50,000 subscribers. Absolutely insane. So if you haven't subscribed yet, he's got some fantastic content. And if we can get him to 50k, that would be absolutely phenomenal. And speaking of subscribing, you should do so here. As you mention your top bucket list coaster down in the comments below. And make sure to stay tuned for the last couple days of Listmas coming up, including my top 25 coasters overall releasing on December 25th. You won't want to miss it. But with that, I want to say thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. And until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.